Hail and well met adventurers. I'm your host, the Dungeon Master, and I bid thee welcome to the very Let's Play that I've been dreading for quite some time now. Welcome, one and all, to Let's Play Biohazard 3 Last Escape. Colloquially known as Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. I'm not exaggerating when I said that this is a, the very let's play that I've been dreading for quite some time. Now as many of you remember, um, if you followed my let's plays from 2016-2017, uh, and maybe even 2018, I did a let's play of both the original Biohazard and its sequel, Biohazard 2. But they weren't your average Let's Plays of those particular uh, series. Instead, I chose to do a Let's Play of Biohazard and Biohazard 2 as they, I felt they were originally meant to be uh, experienced. In other words, I did a real survival Let's Play of the classic Biohazard and Biohazard 2. And I'm actually surprised that I managed to complete those. Especially Biohazard 2. I wasn't sure if I could pull it off. But lo and behold, I did it. Both uh, Claire A and Leon B. So that, ladies and gentlemen, was two of the uh, Biohazard uh, pandemics that, that I did a real survival Let's Play of. The mansion incident and biohazard and as well as uh, one aspect of the raccoon city pandemic in biohazard 2 now i say one aspect because that brings us to this biohazard 3 nemesis real survival now what does real survival mean well, it means uh, several things, but first and foremost, it involves uh, the aiming in uh, Biohazard 3. Now, uh, most people choose to have auto-aiming when it comes to uh, the classic Biohazard series, and I don't blame them, it can be very useful especially for uh, new victims, um, I mean, uh, new viewers to uh, the Biohazard series. But of course, uh, since I'm doing a real survival Let's Play of Biohazard 3, I am not going to be using auto-aim. Instead, I'm going to be using manual aim. That is only one aspect of the nightmare that awaits me in real survival. Now the second aspect of real survival is that in addition to manual aim, the item boxes which can be used to store various items that one encounters throughout the course of uh, their ordeal in Biohazard, Biohazard 2 and Biohazard 3 are normally linked except in my case they're not going to be because this is again real survival and this is uh, going to make things difficult for me because Biohazard 3 raises the stakes a lot from what Biohazard 2 did things are about to get very real from here on out adventurers and I am not looking forward to it I'm not looking forward to, to it at all. Now of course, as with the first two Biohazard uh, adventures, I will call them that, just to uh, calm my nerves here. With the first two Biohazard entries, uh, I did them on an emulator, and the same will be true for Biohazard 3 Nemesis Real Survival. So unfortunately, there'll be a uh, few bits of lag and glitches, and, um, can't really do anything on that on my end. I've tried to 
hopefully have it running as well as I possibly can. But uh, that's just the way it is sometimes. I am absolutely dreading this. And this music is only underscoring uh, everything that I dread about Biohazard 3. Now before we actually uh, dive right into this uh, nightmare that I've set up for myself, a lot of people believe that Biohazard 2, released in 1998, the same year as the Raccoon City disaster, is the uh, quintessential survival horror story. And while many people ha may uh, feel that way, understandable, since for many uh, Biohazard veterans, Biohazard 2 was their first entry into the world of survival horror at large. But of course, uh, with me, I was vaguely familiar with the original Biohazard back in 1996. I was aware of Biohazard 2 in 1998, although I never actually got to experience it for myself. I did hear a lot of rumors and hearsay about it though, which definitely piqued my interest. But when it came to revisiting the world of survival horror with Biohazard 3 in the year 1999, I inadvertently began what would be a 20-year odyssey. In other words, it has been 20 years since I first laid eyes on Biohazard 3, and Biohazard at large has never let me forget that fact, made even more ominous by the fact that only roughly four months away now, make that three and a half months, Biohazard 3, much like Biohazard 2, is getting a reimagining, a retelling in the modern era, but still set in September of 1998. And that makes this all the more harrowing for me. Because as soon as I'm done with this, which might be a while, I will have Biohazard 3 Remake to look forward to. Joy. Joy of joys. Now there is one more aspect to uh, Biohazard 3 Nemesis Real Survival that I must partake in, and that is the difficulty. We can either go on easy mode, which is a fairly moderate way to start, but of course I'm not going to be doing that. I am going to be going on hard mode, because this is real survival. My chances of uh, making it through unscathed are, needless to say, slim to none, but I will uh, persevere as best I can. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us enter the world of survival horror with Let's Play Biohazard 3 Nemesis Real Survival. Otherwise known as... Resident Evil. It all began as an ordinary day in September. An ordinary day in Raccoon City. A city controlled by Umbrella. No one dared to oppose them. And that lack of strength would ultimately lead to their destruction. Once the wheels of justice begin to turn, nothing can stop them. Nothing. It was Raccoon City's last chance, and my last chance. My last escape.
farewell to my life, farewell to my home. This is my last chance for survival. This is my last escape. Very grisly scene indeed. And here we are on the streets of Raccoon City yet again. Different location. And of course we say hello and welcome to a very familiar face. Ladies and gentlemen, Biohazard 3 marks the return of the Mansion Incident Survivor and Stars Alpha Team member, Jill Valentine herself. One of the two Stars members uh, heavily involved in the Mansion Incident along with uh, Chris Redfield as well as uh, several other STARS members such as notable STARS veteran Barry Burton and rookie STARS member Rebecca Chambers. Now Biohazard 3 takes place uh, a full 24 and a half hours uh, before the events of Biohazard 2. In other words, Claire Redfield and Jill Valentine have what am I talking about? Claire Redfield and Leon Kennedy have yet to uh, arrive in Raccoon City on the 29th because uh, I flubbed up there because Joe Valentine is uh, who I'm currently talking about. Now this music that has burned itself into my mind ever since I first heard it 20 years ago truly underscores uh, the tragedy of Raccoon City, as it has fallen victim to the T-Virus that has spread throughout the town. And as uh, iconic as the Raccoon City music and Biohazard 2 was, this right here illustrates just how devastating the T-Virus pandemic truly is. Now of course, Jill has uh, four items on hand. Well, I technically two items. Um, the first of course is her uh, trusty star sidearm, the M92 FS Custom, a custom handgun made for stars. It uses 9mm parabellum rounds. It's known as the Samurai Edge and it uh, has served Joe Valentine well during her ordeal in the mansion incident. Unfortunately, she only has 15 rounds in the clip. Um, now we have this, the, uh, the reloading tool, which is an item that is very unique to Biohazard 3. If we examine it, it is a tool used to load mixed material into an empty bullet. It is used to combine with the gunpowder. Yes, in addition to ammunition, there is gunpowder that we will need. We will basically need to, uh, mix our own gunpowder to create more ammo and uh, we're going to be learning more about that later but uh, first and foremost we actually have a pair of uh, unique items um, game instructions A and game instructions B kind of taking us out of the immersion here um, uh, briefly but uh, these two documents here are exceptionally invaluable when it comes to Biohazard 3. Trust me on this. You don't read these, your chances of survival are up a rat's ass. We hope you can improve your chances to survive. Ah, thank you very much for that, Capcom. I appreciate it. Shooting objects. You make it? different reactions from shooting objects such as oil drums and bombs. Press the R2 button to aim directly at these objects. Yeah, there are uh, explosive uh, oil drums and bombs which we can actually use to uh, destroy certain enemies. Of course, uh, since I'm doing this on real survival, I'm going to have to aim at these objects manually if I want to survive. Quick turn. Um, you can perform quick 180 degree turns. Yeah, the quick turn um, 
Jill basically does a heel turn on the spot, so um, if you have the skills to use it, and the quick turn isn't valuable for uh, a veteran survivor like Jill Valentine. Emergency escape. When you're trapped by enemies, you can push them away to escape. Press the directional buttons. Uh, action, cancel, run. L R1, R2, and L1 buttons run quickly. Footnote. Um, yeah, basically mash these buttons when you're trapped by hordes of enemies, and much like Biohazard 2, there are hordes of enemies. Emergency dodging. Just before an enemy attacks, you can perform a dodge move, move to evade it. Uh, press the R1 or R2 buttons, or the A buttons, and press the action button, or all press the action button while aiming. You can either ready your weapon, which will dodge, or you can press the, uh, or you can fire uh, right as an enemy is about to grab you, and Jill will actually dodge to the side. Um, a very useful maneuver, however, Jill can inadvertently dodge into uh, enemy attacks so, as a result of this, which uh, is the only downside. Not to mention it's difficult to pull off. Um, you can get on and off certain objects that appear in the game, you already know about that. We can press the L2 button to view the map. Now, uh, that was something we couldn't really do in other biohazard and the previous biohazards. We had to look at the map directly from the uh, menu. But now we can just press L2 to uh, directly look at the map. Now this is a big uh, aspect of biohazard 3. Live selection. At certain points in the game, the screen fades into black and white. At these points, you will be prompted to choose between two different options. In other words, make your choice. You can either choose one option, the other option, or you can choose to let time run out and have a third option which is absolutely nothing. But either way you salute, either option you select will have consequences. And of course it is possible to uh, skip certain scenes, I am not going to be doing that. That is the uh, first file. More importantly, or just as important, is uh, the second file, Instructions on the Creation of Bullets. This basically explains how to use the gunpowder with the loading tool, which is going to be very important. Of course, uh, you need both the reloading tool and the gunpowder to use uh, in order to create ammo. I'm just streamlining here. This is uh, information on the reloading tool, obviously, and uh, by combining the gunpowder with the reloading tool, various types of ammunition will be created. Uh, gunpowder. There are three types of basic gunpowders, A, B, and C. Please note that gunpowder C is created by mixing types A and B. Good to know. There are 13 gunpowders uh, in all. Uh, these are some examples. Gunpowder A makes handgun bullets, B makes shotgun shells, C makes grenade rounds, A plus C makes grenade flame rounds, B plus C makes grenade acid rounds, C plus C makes grenade freeze rounds. Now these are a new type of grenade round of fire as a three. These basically uh, use, uh, well, Obviously they use ice because they're freeze rounds, but they're, uh... I'm losing my train of thought here, but, um... As to what exactly the, uh... Kind of like a liquid with nitrogen or some sort of, uh, frozen liquid material to create the, uh, freeze rounds, but they are extremely effective, especially in this. And of course, uh, three sets of uh, C gunpowder crafts magnum bullets. Now, interestingly, if you combine a certain type of gunpowder with the uh, grenade rounds, you can create uh, other types of grenade rounds, which is uh, quite handy. 
and this is it mixing level improvement if you repeatedly create the same kind of ammunition your skill will be improved and you will be able to create more powerful ammunition uh, this is enhanced ammunition and i am probably loath to say this but i am not going to be using uh, enhanced ammunition because this is of course real survival mode so no uh no enhanced ammo for me so that's basically it all uh, jill has uh on her is her trusty beretta and the reloading tool and uh she just made it out of her apartment which is on fire and overrun by uh many zombie citizens and uh we're going to need to find a way out of here now we're in the uptown district of Raccoon City and uh, there is an intersection ahead of us but uh, there is a uh, corpse lying nearby in the alleyway and uh, I have a feeling that that corpse is uh, going to uh, get back up if it hasn't already. Now let's get out of here. Because those zombies are behind us. Oh. Try and uh, thank you. No! Oh, and I failed. Darn it. Oh well. Can't always get it on the first try. There's a dumpster here. Let's get down. Only to be costed by more zombies. Well, that's what happens when we make it to the streets of Raccoon City. There's a door that's locked here, but, uh... Luckily, Jill has managed to uh, knock it down with the power of her bare shoulder. Which I imagine must be hurting right about now. And we're running off to safety, to where wherever safety is. September 28th, daylight. I'm s the monsters have overtaken the city. Somehow, I'm still alive. Okay, we've got to get out of here. What? What? What do you think you're talking about? No, I just lost my daughter out there. How dare you tell me to go back outside? I'm sorry about your daughter, but there isn't going to be any rescue. We have to get out of here. No! I'm not going anywhere. The mo I'd rather starve to death in here, than be eaten by one of those undead monsters! Now leave me alone! And that was one of the first survivors that we've, uh, encountered in, uh, Biohazard. That man's name is Dario Russo, and he is incredibly distraught over uh, what has just transpired. Not that I blame him. We could try to uh, speak with him further. Not that I believe it's going to help. I told you! I'm not leaving! Never! Just get away from me. The container is locked from the inside. In other words, he's uh, sealed himself away. Now uh, we'll leave Dario to his uh, solitude. We'll probably have to come back for him later. He is a survivor after all. And it appears that uh, Jill has managed to make her way to the sanctuary of... Uh, an industrial warehouse. As to uh, how exactly she managed to get here from where she was is uh, a mystery that's lost to the ages. But uh, lo and behold, she made it. So uh, I believe I'm going to end this first episode of Let's Play. Biohazard 3 Real Survival. 
here for the moment and when we return Jill will further explore the warehouse um, see what uh, useful supplies can be obtained before eventually uh, following her plan to escape Raccoon City by braving the outdoors. Now believe you me, as tempted as I am to uh, share in Dario's uh, melancholy, we're not going to survive Raccoon City by remaining here in the warehouse. So as always, adventurers, I'm your host, the Dungeon Master, and as ever, until next we meet.